with my jump shot. <laughs> These are the wacky widgets and daring doohickeys in the 1987 Porsche 911. That's right, gadgets and gizmos, baby. Let's do it. The spoilers on the back of these old Porsche 911s are called whale tails because it looks like the tail from a whale. Go figure. Now this rubber on the outside is super pliable and it feels a lot like the rubber on the bottom of your shoe. In the 1980s, Porsche loved their unlabeled knobs and this knob pops open the gas cap. The gas tank is in the front because the engine is in the back and the actual fuel filler is covered by this little plastic shield so when you're filling it up you don't spill gas on your paint. Pretty clever. Now there are actually two holes here, one for gas and this one for windshield washer fluid. That's so you don't have to open the trunk, the hood, the, the, the trunk hood to fill it up. Now to get to the trunk slash hood there is a little lever here that you pull out and that pops it open but very cleverly there is a key slot which you can use to lock it so praying eyes or valets can't get in there. All right, now Tesla people call this area, ooh, it's full of crap. <laughs> now Tesla people call this area the frunk for front trunk. I think that sounds like a really bad 1970s rock band, so I'm not gonna call it a frunk, but the hood trunk area in a 911 is lined in this mouse fur carpet. It's actually really big, and underneath the carpet is the spare tire and the battery along with the fuse box. And one more top tip, if you need to close the hood slash trunk on a Porsche, you wanna lower it down gently and then with two hands, close it up. Close it up. You really gotta take two hands and close it up. There it goes. Now to pop the engine compartment, you actually have to open the door first and then there's yet another unlabeled lever. Pull that really hard, like really hard. And then it might not open, there it goes. Now when you go to open the rear hood or the the rood, the whole whale tail rises with it and you are greeted by a fan. That's right, the Porsche 911 of course is air cooled, at least these old ones, and they need a big ass fan to keep it nice and cool. The dipstick in these old Porsches is actually located underneath the oil cap. That's right, you have to take out the oil cap completely. The dipstick on an old Porsche is underneath the oil cap. So you unscrew this and there it is, this little metal prong. That comes out and that's how you check your oil. And then of course you fill up your oil in the same exact location. But you gotta get it right in the hole so you can put your oil cap back. Here's what the key to an old 911 looks like. It's a pretty standard looking key until you flip it over and there's a button and this button doesn't unlock the car. It actually turns on this little tiny light so you can see what you're doing at night. These never work. The key slot is located to the left of the steering wheel. Some people thought that was because of Le Mans start, but in the 80s it was so that you could get to your Huey Lewis and the News concert just a little bit quicker. Just in case you forget your shoulder pads too, there's a little warning to remind you to put on your shoulder pads. And speaking of race car stuff, the tachometer is the most central gauge in an old Porsche. That's because Porsche thought that was the gauge that was most important when you're driving quick. Now the speedometer and the clock and the oil pressure, those are all kind of more toward the side, but the tack, right where it needs to be. Now this Dr. Seuss hinkle horn looking trumpety thing is actually the air intake. That's where the Porsche breathes its precious, precious air. It's connected to the air box, but it definitely looks a little bit goofy. The door handles on these old Porsches are hidden beneath the armrest. And of course they're louvered because 1987, but you pull that out and that's how you open the door. And just behind that is the armrest, which pivots upwards. It's got a cubby in there. That's pretty handy. This Luigi mushroom on top of the door panel is the mirror adjuster. But how do you adjust the other mirror? Well, you have to flick this random black switch that is, of course, underneath the oil pressure gauge so you can now adjust and maneuver the right rear view mirror. Uh, would they have labeled that? No, but that's where it is. Now these white 1980s Miami Vice looking seats are actually really comfortable, but did you know these old 911s also had rear seats? To get to them, you pull this lever. Actually, there's a lever on either side of both front seats. That folds forward and then, ready for this? That's your rear seat. That's, that's supposed to be for a human. Um, it isn't for a human, at least not one with legs, but um, yes, that's, that's the acceptable seating position in an 87 911. There is a lap belt though. Let's see if I can, oh wow, giving myself a colonoscopy trying to get to this one. Come on, there it is. Yeah, that's good. That feels safe in a rollover. I'm pretty sure that I would have my head, definitely. 
Now the climate controls on an old 911 are very logical. Up here is your control for your heater and your defrost. Notice the defrost. Now of course to turn the defroster on, you reach down below the seats. Now I kid you not, there are these two ears that you pull up and that turns on the defrost. Oh, and there's another defrost lever. I don't know what this one's for, but it's here. And these also turn on the fan and that turns on the fan. And also this turns on the fan for the defrost. Um, unless there are 8,000 fans, I'm not sure why you need four different defrost controls. But but logically, the air conditioning is down here by your right foot. So this is how you turn on the air conditioning. Not the defrost or the heater, just the air conditioning. Who came up with this? What was the, just put it all in one space. This knob is actually the control for the locks. You don't push in on it, you don't pull out on it, you actually twist it and the lock glides down into the door. That's pretty satisfying, but you can also push a button down here by the air conditioner. That'll also manually lock it. This right here is how you turn on the windshield wipers. This right here is how you turn on the cruise control. Now, if you have freakishly long fingers like me, seriously, I look like a sloth, you run the risk of turning both on at the same time. If you are a normally proportioned human being, that won't be an issue. So I'm not really sure why I'm talking about it at all, but there you go. That's where the cruise control's at. This terrible steering wheel is not stock. It is the worst steering wheel ever put into a car ever. I think they stole this off of like a PlayStation 1 arcade game from Red Robin. I, I'm pretty sure I've used this when I was six, but it's just terrible. However, the horn is original and listen to what it sounds like. Oh yes, coming through. The pedals on these old 911s hinge from the bottom. So most pedals hinge like well, that's a horrible example. They hinge like that. These ones hinge like that. Not that that made it any more clear, but the clutch, the brake, and the throttle all hinge from the bottom. That's actually a carryover from the old Volkswagen Beetle, believe it or not. I feel like a fish in a fishbowl, but the wipers on an old Porsche actually hang out. They rest on the wrong side of the windshield. Most actually come to rest on the passenger side, but on a 911, they come to rest on the driver's side. Now they work like wipers but they're actually super effective at clearing the windshield directly in front of the driver. The mirrors in the 911 are in different spots left to right. So the driver's side mirror is located here, right next to the A-pillar. But the passenger side mirror is actually located behind the A-pillar. It's supposed to be for better visibility, but it just drives my OCD crazy. In the back, you've got this giant red strip across the rear of the car. It looks like one massive brake light, but it's not. It's just a reflector. The brake lights are out here on the corners. So there you have it, the cool gadgets and gizmos inside and outside a 1987 911. Now we paid $35,000 for this car, which as it turns out is not enough because you're better off buying the best one you can afford and not the cheapest one out there uh, because this one has a lot of problems, but it's still a fun car, really cool. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with TFL Now. Be sure to click subscribe and touch that bell icon so you never miss more of these gadgets and gizmos reviews.